Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin A. McGrail. Welcome to this presentation on the Apache Way at NXNet Day. I hope you're enjoying everything so far. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. And uh, first, a little bit about me. So again, my name is Kevin A. McGrail, but most people just know me as Cam, uh, my initials. I'm the principal evangelist at a company called Dido. We do uh, cloud migrations, especially for Google, uh, help leverage and manage your web services. Uh, but in addition to that as my day job, I'm also an Apache Software Foundation member. And uh, at the foundation, I work uh, especially with the Spam Assassin Project and the Incubator, where I'm currently uh, helping mentor four different projects. We'll talk a little bit about that as we go along. Uh, but if you're interested, I love talking to people. Just mention that uh, you uh, saw me at MX that day and reach out to me on LinkedIn. You'll find my account uh, listed right there. Uh, you'll notice the avatar with the cam. Uh, that really just tells you I was born to work with anti-spam because no, that is not a Photoshopped product. That really is a Canadian brand of spam called uh, called Cam by Maple Leaf. So uh, you'll find that as my avatar on LinkedIn. So in any case, what I want to do is start a little bit, just give some people a small introduction to what is the Apache Software Foundation before we talk about the Apache way or how we try and do things at the Apache Software Foundation. So first of all, we're a charity, a 501c3 uh, charity in the United States. So that means that we're not a trade organization. And uh, as such, we do things a little differently than some of the other open source foundations that are out there. Uh, some of that will become evident with the Apache way that we talk about. Uh, but you know, overall, most people know us because of the Apache HTTPD uh, server and the Apache software license. So our mission here at the ASF is we provide software for the public good. We do so by you know, producing open source software and supporting the foundation's uh, diverse so software project communities, especially how we do it. And we do all of this at no charge. So there's no, uh, no, no cost whatsoever to download our software and use it. And additionally, we pair this with our Apache Software License V2. So the Apache Software License V2 is ASL V2. It's a very permissive, business-friendly open source license and it takes care of things like patent grants and it has no copyleft provisions. Uh, we'll cover that a little bit later on if you're not familiar with that concept. But uh, we're very intrinsic to the way the world computes today. We're about 21 years old, we'll talk about that. Uh, but 80% of the world's websites at least use some portion of our software, whether, whether that be HTTPD or some project based off of our software or things like uh, you know, uh, Apache Hadoop, things like that are uh, very intrinsic and very common to use in almost every blue chip company around the world. Additionally, every smartphone has our software on it. And many people are surprised to find that. And additionally, every uh, plane in the US airspace is tracked with our software. So we don't go around tooting our horn a whole lot, but we are there, we're making good software and people use it. And that's what gives our value to the world. We have hundreds of projects. I think we're currently at 386 projects under our umbrella. It's everything from A to Z, ActiveMQ, all the way to Zookeeper, projects like Spam Assassin, as I mentioned, and Hadoop, and Kafka, and MXNet, like we're talking about today. So, uh, you know, we're just over 21 years old. In March of next year, we'll turn 22. So we're now legal to drink in the U.S., uh, but we're very proud of the fact that over the last 21 years, we've really changed the way people compute. We've gone from people, uh, you know, kind of wondering what open source was, how they could use it in business, to the fact that you know some of the largest clouds in the world uh, have more Linux boxes and more software that's open source based than they do have commercial proprietary software. So uh, really uh, quite a, a big change in, in just over two decades. Uh, but how do we make that change? Well, you know what are we? So you know the Apache Software Foundation. We're not a democracy. We don't believe people have an innate right to vote. Uh, we're not capitalists. You know you can't buy a seat on the board. We're not a trade organization. We where, you know, everything's done here uh, quite a bit differently. Uh, we're also not a monarchy. You know, uh, everybody's equal, kings and pawns side by side, you know, and, and uh, you know, we don't care if you're a billionaire or if you're a teenager with $5 in the bank account. If you can program, you have a place here. And the reason for that is because we're a meritocracy. So to be able to have a say here, you have to prove your worth and have that worth judged by the community. And that's a very important concept here. It's a key part of the Apache way. So, why do we do it though? You know, I think the key thing that we do is uh, we want to make sure that the projects have what they need to do. So we want to make sure that their communities uh, have the resources they need, that they have the legal uh, uh, protection that they need, that they get recognition. So by joining together with other like-minded people and other uh, uh, projects, you know, projects can get more attention and new projects can get attention from older, more established projects. 
And uh, finally, really just, uh, you know, build a good, vibrant community that can make code. And that's uh, something that is really apparent when you talk about the Apache way uh, that we'll get into now. So the first tenet of the Apache way is our resiliency. Uh, Danny Angus put it really well, um, you know, later on, we'll get to his quote. But, you know, for me, I often start out with a little bit more controversial statement that, you know, people can really hate the Apache way. You, I think engineers as a habit uh, have to learn things the hard way. I know what I do. And so sometimes it takes a few years until people really can appreciate what the uh, Apache Software Foundation is about, why we have the Apache way, why we do th things the way we do. And, uh, you know, we look for that catharsis, which usually comes in about two to three years where something happens and they go, oh, that's why it worked. That's why the organization is resilient. That's why we've, we've been around for 21 plus years, uh, even despite all the changes in computing in the world in the meantime. Uh, but, you know, the the... This presentation could be, called, could be called yet another of the Apache Way uh, presentation. So there is no Apache Way. This is my interpretation of it. There's many people who have inspired and contributed to these concepts over the years. I won't thank them all by name. I'm sure I'll forget somebody. But uh, if you've seen one, the Apache Way presentation, you've seen one Apache Way uh, presentation. So don't hesitate to talk to others, get their opinions on the Apache Way, talk to them about what they're doing. And don't be afraid to have it change because that's part of our resiliency. We're self-correcting and resilient. You know, as Danny Angus wrote, you know, for me, there's two defining characteristics of the ASF. You know, the first is making uh, is that we are making it up as we go. And the second is that there are no right answers, only the best we have so far. Uh, you know, when we set off to do open source software, there wasn't a roadmap, there wasn't a license. We had to write it and we had to go through another license. And additionally, you know, we don't know what the future is bringing. We don't try and do forecasting. We're not a corporation. Uh, we look at what projects come to us, and that's how we do things. We're not saying, oh, next year we want to have uh, five projects that work on XYZ. No, we wait for the projects to come to us. We help them we'd be better and follow the Apache way in doing that. And by doing so, we organically uh, make ourselves part of the fabric of the software community. Uh, we are a charity. Uh, so you know, many of the people here, are all of them are here just to make the world a better place. Uh, we're completely volunteer driven. Uh, our entire project is led, all our projects are led by volunteers. And uh, we do so in a bottom up decentralized organizational method. And what it does is lets those communities produce good software and, uh, you know, for the public good. Uh, the communities, uh, this is a very interesting concept of the Apache way. So we value communities over code. And you might be asking, like, what does that mean? Well, it can really be summed up by one example. So Tomorrow, if our repositories that store our software got deleted, it would be bad, but we'd be able to recover for it, uh, recover from it. Uh, and I don't mean like disaster recovery and backups. What I mean is we still have the community, the people that wrote that code, that built those projects, that got them moving. Uh, they could probably start over from scratch and do it better the second time. But if the reverse was to happen where we had the repositories, but we lost the community, uh, we couldn't recover from that. So communities are very, very important to us. And, uh, you know, part of the process that we do with those communities is we try and make sure that uh, minority voices are heard. And by doing so, or, or by, we do that by making sure that we work on building uh, support and consensus rather than just rules. So, you know, we don't look for people to take votes and, you know, say, well, this group outvoted the other. No, we look to say, OK, we got, uh, you know, uh, 10 people versus 12 people who voted. So we clearly don't have consensus. We need to figure out what's going on. And we talk through the issues until hopefully we, we reach a 100% consensus. Um, the way we do that is with our voting procedures. I highly recommend you go take a look at them at apache.org slash foundation slash voting dot HTML. Links on my slides, and I will have the slides up on LinkedIn for you. Uh, but you know, with that uh, voting procedure, we have three main things. You can vote a plus one, which is like a yes, a zero, which is like a neutral, and a negative one, which is a veto. Uh, but, you know, many of our stuff is pretty, uh, pretty basic stuff, but we're volunteers. So we want to make sure that there's enough time for all the volunteers to weigh in. So you'll see us use things like lazy consensus and 72 hour windows. And, you know, for anybody who's in the mil military, you know, kind of like the unless otherwise directed concepts, you know, so, you know, for example, uh, a very legitimate vote would be, hey, I'm going to do this. I vote plus one for it. Um, if, if I don't have any disagreements, I'll go ahead and do this on uh, you know, X, Y, Z date and time, which is 72 hours from now. Uh, so it's what we call lazy consensus. And uh, this helps projects move forward, especially on non-controversial things. 
uh, important things, especially where any type of intellectual property and the IP provenance is concerned. Uh, we do have very specific release uh, requirements and voting for those things are done with a very specific process. Again, you can see that all on our website and a lot of organizations use this internally for their own projects and their own uh, handling of uh, their um, uh, you know, internal uh, voting. So uh, as I said before, we are a meritocracy. So you, know, you earn power, you earn worth as you uh, get it through merit by doing things, by making successful patches, adding to the project. Um, and that can be done in a lot of different ways. It can be graphics or bug tracking or answering users' questions or improving documentation or programming. So we aren't just a group of programmers. It takes all different types to make a good piece of software uh, out there in the world. Um, but one of the things I do say is that the best er merit and the most amount of er merit is earned by people who put forth ideas and then sit down and make those uh, uh, ideas happen. Uh, the JFDI or just F and do it is a very good principle that a lot of people can just dive into the, uh, the foundation. They can look at a problem. They can look at one of our hundreds of projects, as I mentioned. And with that, they can just find something that interests them and they can start fixing it and earn merit that way and submit patches. And pretty soon they might find that they're getting an invitation to be a contributor uh, or a committer as we call it on the project. And they start getting karma so that they can be a part of the community uh, more formally. So everyone at Apache though is an individual. Nobody represents a company. That's very important. We're not a trade organization. It doesn't matter where you work or even if you do work or even if you're old enough to work. Uh, the key point here is just that you have merit and skills that you're willing to contribute to the project. Um, and we're aware of that with a meritocracy. One of the things we watch out for, if anybody studied them, is we try and watch out for dictatorships. We have some concepts that we try and do that and handle those with, you know, trying to rotate leadership, things like that, and always grow your community and, and uh, you know, look to be adding committers constantly. So you have fresh bloods, so you have different opinions, and you're not just stagnating. So... That all comes down to the transparency and our leadership model. Uh, as I mentioned, it's bottom up. Uh, but uh, you know, part of that is we're also volunteers. We, we largely rely on asynchronous methods like mailing lists. So there's a, a not very funny you know, you know, joke slash statement, which is if it didn't happen on the list, it didn't happen. Uh, you know, things like um, as or synchronous calls uh, are not really uh, very useful. If we do them, contemporaneous notes are kept and brought to the list immediately and decisions aren't made during those calls. The decisions are made on the list. And that way everybody has their right to weigh in. People have the right to, to exercise their veto or their plus one. And also it's archived. So you know, years from now, people who wanna get involved in the project can go back and read the same information. Or if they wanna find out how a decision got made, it's documented and what led to it. Um, and you know, as I mentioned before, you know, Danny pointed it out, you know, we don't necessarily know everything about what's going on. We aren't forecasting the future here. And so we want to make sure we don't do anything that that breaks. And so uh, one of the concepts that we try and espouse is a reversible baby step. So if we have something that's a big change, we try and do it in small steps so that we can reverse it and not break things in the meantime. Uh, one of the reasons I got involved with the Apache Software Foundation was just because the software wanted to make a fix and found that the license was just very pragmatic, very business friendly. Uh, I didn't have to do anything like distribute my code or give it away, which really made the lawyers at the companies happy, things like that. And, uh, uh, you know, with now, as I mentioned, 388 projects, there's plenty of, of code that's out there. Tons of it is reusable. You can mix and match different uh, solutions from different projects and all under the same license and really just rapidly make changes and build software that, you know, not that long ago would take a lot more effort and time. Uh, but, uh, you know, overall, though, you get a great risk mitigation. So uh, your software is never end of life. Uh, one of our sponsors put it very well that you control your destiny. You don't have to worry that a vendor is going to cancel a project. You don't have to worry that Apache, you know, for example, software has a life cycle. And sometimes it outlives that life cycle and it goes to what we call the attic. But it's still out there. The code's still available. It's still licensed. You can make changes to it. And because there's no copyleft provisions and things like that, uh, you don't have to distribute your code just because you changed it. So uh, you won't have to worry that a vendor is going to pull the rug out from underneath you or raise the prices on the software licensing, things like that. Uh, make it very good. And, uh, you know, Drias, uh, who used to be with Spam Experts, put it very well. You know, if you're looking at different licenses, like, for example, he wrote this comparison with the GNU Public License B3, the GPL B3 versus the ASL B2. And he put it very succinctly, you know, 
if you're going to do that, start with the Apache license. And if I ever feel bad about that, switch to GPL v3. The other way around is not possible after thousands of idealistic programmers committed their improvements. So what that basically means is that, you know, with the copyleft provisions of GPL v3, it's very difficult to switch from GPL v3 to Apache. But the other way around, if it ever becomes a necessity, is something that you, you can do. Uh, but using other licenses that aren't as pragmatic, aren't as business friendly, can be a problem. So, for example, in the VC community, this is a real quote from a startup I worked with. And basically, they were very concerned that they had GPL software in their mix because they distributed it. And they basically said if they ever have to go through an MA process, the GPL license will turn up in a disclosure report. That was considered a very big risk. And with the, anytime you have investors or you're dealing with VCs, you probably, uh, if you deal with that, you'll know that, you know, any friction you can remove, any hurdles that you can take away are always a good thing. And the ASL V2 will end those type of hurdles. Um, and another way that we do it is by following the Apache way on vendor neutrality. I don't care where you work when you work on the project. It doesn't matter to me what your day job is. It doesn't have any bearing and it shouldn't have any bearing on how you're voting and what, uh, what, uh, how you vote on the project. It might control what you work on and what interests you on moving things forward. That's fine. Uh, but we're not about quid pro quo. We're not a trade organization. And I love saying, you know, use our software, make a billion dollar company with it. You don't owe us anything. It'd be nice if you gave some uh, contributions back to the organization, helped us keep and continue and, you know, figure out what the next great software is that's out there. Uh, but, you know, that's our mission, provide open source software, do it for the public good and do it at no charge, whether you're a company or a person. And uh, for those people that are involved, we try and make sure it's very inclusive. It's not based on your age, sex, religion, socioeconomic status, sexual preference, et cetera. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, really just based on merit, you know, can you program? And, uh, you know, some of those people are, are some people are, are surprised to find out, you know, you have to sign your contributor license agreement, for example, with your real legal name. But after that, you know, you can use a pseudonym. We don't, you know, there's nothing requiring you to disclose publicly what's going on. You can use any name you want and, uh, you know, just contribute. And people will, will gauge your efforts based on the quality of those uh, contributions. Uh, and, you know, that comes back to that whole concept I talked about community over code. You know, inclusion to us is very important. We recognize there's huge problems with diversity and inclusion in the technical world. And I think we've been over the last few years really hitting it head on to try and improve it. Uh, we're working on the pipeline. We by no means have it licked or fixed or anything like that. But I do hope we're showing positive progress in, um, you know, fixing these type of issues and getting more people. So I would encourage you, you know, to get involved. Um, inclusion is very important to us. And, uh, you know, one of the ways that I tell people to, to you know, uh, not listen to the naysayers is I use a great concept from Tim Freeman from about, uh, what, 25 years ago, almost. He wrote an article called Do Not Feed the Energy Creature back on a bulletin board system. And it's just nowadays we'd call that a troll. And, you know, it, what it just basically does is uses very sound psychology with applied behavioral analysis of not rewarding the behavior you don't want to see repeated. So in this particular case, don't feed the energy creature. Don't give the person who's just looking for attention uh, the attention that they seek. And by doing so, you can generally find that you will uh, be a lot happier. Uh, if you're interested in our projects, you can go to projects.apache.org. You can see all of them. As I mentioned, 386 projects uh, at the moment underneath our initiative, including 339 top-level initiatives, uh, five uh, special projects, and 47 current incubating projects. Uh, this changes all the time. You know, we have uh, projects that graduate. We have projects that go to the attic. Uh, we have new uh, projects that come in. Uh, so these numbers change, but you can, you can find out more about them all at projects.apache.org. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in finding out more about how people come into the foundation and how projects get started, that's all done through the Apache Incubator. So uh, the Incubator is that entry path that we have, and it's, it's how external projects and any donations of external projects also come in that way. It has two primary goals. The first goal is to make sure any donations follow our intellectual property uh, legal standards. And the second thing is to make sure that the communities are developed correctly and they follow our guiding principles. And that is what we call the Apache way. And so uh, under our foundation website, there is a how it works link. Uh, the link will be on the slides as well. And it really goes into how, how it works, how we incubate. Um, typically that process takes about 18 months. Uh, I've mentored quite a few projects now at this point, very proud of that. Uh, and sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it goes a little quicker. Uh, but it's a it's a learning experience for a lot of people. And as I mentioned, the Apache way is not always something that people love. So other than that, I will say thank you.
I will be around for questions. And uh, again, if you want to reach out to me on LinkedIn, I love discussing anything open source. Happy to talk about the Apache way. If you have a project you're looking to bring in, we'll talk about that, um, how you can build a community, how you can become part of the foundation, or if you're just interested in helping a, a project. As I mentioned, JFDI, don't look for permission, don't look to apply, look for a project that interests interest you and look to make valuable contributions. So thank you again and have a nice day.